Hi, I'm Dennis DiCicco for Sky and Telescope Magazine here at the Northeast Astronomy Forum for 2017. And right now I'm over at the FLI booth, Finger Lakes Instrumentation. And this is one company that needs very little introduction for readers. The company's coming up on 20 years old, and any of our viewers or Sky and Telescope readers who have looked in the magazine or online know that some of the most spectacular images that amateurs are producing are being made with FLI cameras. And right now, I'm with Gary McAnally, the Sales and Marketing Manager for FLI. And before we get into the stuff that you've got new, you've got some exciting news. Our customers at European Southern Observatory, who have an observatory at La Silla in Chile, uh, discovered five exoplanets. And these aren't your regular run-of-the-mill exoplanets. Uh, these exoplanets are the same, approximately the same size as Earth. Five of them were discovered using one of our cameras, a ProLine camera, and then two more were added later by NASA. That's really great. All right, so you want to show me what you've got new here this year? This is Kepler, our new model that supports scientific CMOS sensors, which, unlike CCDs, can have low noise as well as high frame rates at the same time. They have the same sensitivity as CCDs. Uh, the back illuminated versions have very high quantum efficiency. The front illuminated versions are similar to, say, a KEF-16803 or a KEF-8300 that you're used to. This particular camera has been designed to address some of the issues we've seen in the past. For example, both liquid circulation or air cooling. Also, we have a shutter module in the front that can be replaced by the end user. There's a power option here that can be replaced by the end user, and the fan can be replaced by the end user. All right, and what are the connections that are available for this? Um, this runs off of a USB port, USB 3, sorry. Uh, it also has a fiber input. Uh, on one model it has an SFP fiber, fiber, on the other model it's a QSFP because that one can go almost 400 frames per second. You mentioned high frame rate, 400 frames per second. Tell me a little bit more about that. Well, both of the initial models are 2K by 2K. They're about 2,000 pixels by 2,000 pixels. The back illuminated version will go 24 frames per second in high dynamic range mode, so 1.3 electrons noise. Read noise. Read noise, exactly. Uh, and 48 frames per second in full out, full speed mode. The, the front illuminated version will go 94 frames per second in high dynamic range mode and about 376 frames per second full out speed. That's amazing. Now you say it's a 2K chip. How big are the pixels? The back illuminated version, the pixels are 11 microns. The front illuminated version, the pixels are 6.5 microns. So you've got a sheet here that shows the relative size of these detectors. Correct. Yeah. We developed this chart to show customers the relative sizes of different sensors. It's very helpful for them to know, for example, if they're, they've got an 8300 and they're thinking about moving up to a 16200, they can see the relative sizes. The top of the chart shows front illuminated sensors, including uh, CCDs and the single CMOS there. And then the middle of the chart is interline transfers, which would be CCDs only. And then the bottom of the chart is back illuminated sensors, including this new 2K by 2K 11 micron back illuminated CMOS. So we're one of the few camera companies that actually supports all three different types of sensors, full frame, front illuminated sensors, interline transfer, and back illuminated sensors. So basically all of the sensors that are on that sheet are available in your various camera lines? Correct. All right. And you have more than cameras? Yes. Uh, those, in the, especially in the astronomy hobby, know us for our filter wheels and our high precision focuser, the Atlas. So tell our viewers a little bit more about the Atlas focuser. The Atlas is the highest precision focuser in the industry, 105,000 steps, 85 nanometers per step, with a total travel of about 0.375 inches. It can carry about more than 25 pounds of load. I agree with you about this focuser. Um, recently in the magazine, we had a review of one of your systems. We had this focuser, and I found it to be an excellent piece of equipment. Strong, stable, and ultra precise. Um, you mentioned the filter wheel. You want to show readers a little bit more about that? Another one of our unique products is a centerline filter wheel. It's got two carousels, five positions each. They overlap in the center, so you have a center aperture so that when you're skewing the telescope around, you're not changing the weight distribution. Usually a filter wheel this size will have one aperture off to the side, which gives a big moment arm over on here. So you said that there were two carousels, each with five positions, but in general you would leave one open in each wheel so that you could have a clear throughput. Exactly. All right, so you could carry as many as eight separate filters and still have a clear aperture as well. Correct. Yeah. 
And then I like what you said before about with this centered and balanced. I know for a lot of telescopes, depending on the size of them, if you have a load off to one side, it can be very awkward to get the telescope balanced. So exactly. With, with this, it's all nice on the center. Another new product is the uh, ML5100 camera, which is used, uses this 50 megapixel sensor from On Semiconductor. It's about 8,000 pixels by 6,000 pixels, 6 microns. You can see how big it is compared, for example, to a 16200 or an 8300. So this 50 megapixel chip has got 6 micron pixels, so that's great for short focal length telescopes. And in terms of cameras that are available in the amateur market, this is a unique chip, right? It is. This chip is about one third larger than the 16803, which is pretty popular. It's also three times the resolution. And another new introduction since last year's show is the microlens camera featuring the KAF 16200 sensor. It's a 16 megapixel sensor with six micron pixels. Again, good for shorter focal length scopes. That's a good segue between the 8300 and the larger sensors like the 16803 and the 5100. That's great. This is one of the nice things about coming to NEEF every year is you get to see all the new things that people have and it's obvious that you're continuing the innovations in the market for the CCD cameras in the cosmos. I want to thank you very much for telling our viewers about what you have here and I want to remind people if they want more information about what they've seen and all the other products that are available from FLI, they can go to the website at flicamera.com. I'm Dennis DiCicco for Sky and Telescope Magazine here at the 2017 Northeast Astronomy Forum.